Welcome to the Masterclass Sessions. Over the coming months, we will be featuring professionals and craft experts from across the UK to help Rotarians develop their media skills. Today's focus is on public image, obviously, but it's about telling the Rotary story and branding. Very important. Check the, check the thing out behind me. Now, there will be an opportunity to ask questions we're using the Q&A function. We ask you that you just type in your questions and we will answer them. There'll be an opportunity after each panelist. So we want to get the debate going. We want you to talk about your issues, talk about the questions, anything that's come up. Bill Dyer is an assistant public image coordinator and is considered uh, an expert in rotary branding. He is the president of the Prescott Club he was part of the Think Differently team, and he's part of the Together Talks. He's an integral part of the Together Talks. Now, what Phil doesn't know about branding, actually, isn't he worth knowing? <laughs> he uh, believes that skills to help others is the right thing to do. So, Phil, you're in the room. Over to you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for that introduction, and uh, Irene, and thank you, uh, Dave, uh, for your uh, insightful uh, presentation there about Rotary telling the story. I'm going to go straight into it now and uh, share my screen. Uh, so today uh, we're going to talk about uh, the Rotary power brand. I think it is a powerful brand on many levels. Uh, so let's uh, let's kick off. <clears throat> we'll go through that. Phil Dyer, club president of uh, Rotary Prescott amongst other things, as Irene has said. Uh, just to kick off, I would like to say um, all about telling the story. If Rotary is about telling our story, what story is being written right now? Something to think about as I go through these next slides. We've all heard the term, people buy with their eyes. And never more so in this world of social media, saturated world of high def, computer enhanced, colour corrected images, the world we live in today, people buy with their eyes. And we need to put out a consistent, exciting, vibrant image for Rotary going forward. Images that we put on our social media can be broadcast from Liverpool to Lima in a matter of seconds. And you think people are only looking in your community well if you've got the hashtags on and you've got the right uh, distribution it can go across the globe in a blink of an eye as dave has said this morning we're part of an organization of 1.2 million members we have global reach and we need to respect our brand with consistency there is a whole organization behind the club the district rotary great britain and ireland and uh, that is Rotary International. So to coin a famous quote, I think this could be our finest hour. The last few weeks, we've seen a technological tidal wave spread across Rotary, where we've all become Zoom media webinar experts. Our clubs are now 
uh, we're able to introduce clubs and members to our clubs from across the world. Multi-district meetings, multi-zone meetings, multi-country meetings. This definitely could be our finest hour, as we've talked about. Varying numbers on the 750,000 or 450,000 volunteers that signed up for the, the NHS. But how do we encourage them to give service to Rotary? Well, in my Rotary world, it's all about projects. And projects are successful if we have the correct branding behind them. And today we are talking about the Rotary Power Brand. We need to be seen to be open for business. And I use that term business because we need to engage with the communities that we are serving and make us look alive, exciting and vibrant. How many times do we look back at websites and social media channels that haven't been updated or have poor and inconsistent branding on them? Anyway, to set the scene, I've got a short video that I would like to play. Um, I hope it um, is exciting for you. Uh, it's a generic video, uh, but I hope you enjoy. I will see you in a few minutes. <laughs>
uh, that little video. Like I say, it was a generic video, but I think it's um, it's excellent and it proves how powerful brands can be, and no less than the Rotary brand. But I believe that we do have a perception issue uh, in Rotary. Um, and um, there's some people out there that are doing branding really well, but there's also a lot of people that are not doing branding very well at all. Uh, we have a perception issue in my, uh, my opinion. Uh, we, uh, it's a classic rotary image. Um, we have um, people that want to stick with the, uh, the old legacy brand, which is not it is old it's seven years it was the change and it is time for us to to stop using it it is it is wrong um there's also a lot of uh, rules in rotary uh, i don't want to talk about volumes one two and three today uh, but i will be talking about um the rotary visual guidelines um and these are available to download if you've got a, and you should all have, I'm hoping, a Rotary.org account. You can download these and there is some great uh, advice in here about how we can use the brand. And we need to be aware that we are a global organisation and we have voice and visual identity guidelines to help us broadcast our voice in the communities that we serve. Uh, so we're going to get a little bit techy for a bit now and, and talk a little bit about um, the, br the branding of our organisation. Uh, so this is our master brand. This is the, the way, uh, the uh, iconography that we use to broadcast our brand. Uh, this is the standard version of the master brand, uh, but it's available in a simplified format. Uh, and as a result of uh, changes to the 2019-20 uh, edition of the uh, Voice and Brand Guidelines, we can now use this version uh, for anything we want. It was originally uh, brought out as a simplified version for use on small print matters or to be printed uh, small on, on uh, publications, etc. Uh, but it can be used uh, wherever you want. Uh, those that were at... Um, the Hamburg Convention last year will notice that this was a 60 foot image on the backdrop for most of the screens of the uh, the main arena. The wheel, we still have the wheel and the wheel is referred to as the mark of excellence. And the mark of excellence can only be used with the Rotary International written round it and it can be used uh, wherever you are displaying the master brand. It should be not be used on its own without some reference to the master brand. Now, here's something. We have an internal theme every year, and it's a very apt internal theme this year. Rotary opens opportunities, but it is an internal theme. It, uh, you'll have seen a lot of uh, broadcast media this last few days uh, because it was the turn of our year. Uh, but this is an internal call to arms for us as Rotarians and it really should not be used on externally broadcast material. You will see it used on externally broadcast material, but it should really not be used. Um, the idea behind that is that if the theme changes every year, it's confusing to the external world and we use the Rotary Master brand as our uh, as our main form of logo. And if you think back at other large brands, they don't change their brand every year. This is an internal uh, an internal call to arms for us. And it, oh, so this year is Rotary opens opportunities for, for us as Rotarians. So as I said before, it is now six, I think it's actually seven years since it was actually changed. Um, and the legacy brand, which it's often referred to, or the wrong brand or the old brand, um, is gone. It's, it's, it's obsolete and should not be used. Uh, and just as a reminder, uh, Rotarians in the room today, uh, when we've signed our club compliance forms, in the small print in there, we say that we will adhere to the bylaws associated with the association and Rotary International. And one of them in there is the use of the correct 
uh, branding of the organization so the use of the uh, of this wheel should be uh, should be uh, not used at all ever going forward one of the reasons for that is that we've got new branding and if you go and buy a new Ford Puma car you get a new Ford badge on the front of it you don't get an old Ford badge can't do it new car new badge you can't get an old badge so I wanted to show you this here uh, here are some slides um, or a, a slide here that shows a number of well-known uh, humanitarian and charity based organizations that we're all familiar with again with the um, the legacy wheel the old wheel shown and in my opinion uh, it gets a little bit lost you can hardly word, read the word uh, Rotary International in there and everyone else's um, graphic says what it does on the tin to coin a phrase these graphics were provided by uh, one of the uh, Rotary coordinators Chalmers Kersley I'm sure a number of you will know Chalmers but here is the same series of graphics with the master brand and you can see the difference there rotary is clearly displayed they're all the same size these images they're all the same um, height uh, not to, to confuse anything I'll just go back there and there you go again with the rotary master brand so that's the master brand and we should be using it um, now where do we get hold of this information uh, as I said there is some brand guidelines out there but uh, on the rotary.org website uh, once you've logged in we have a brand center and the brand center is a great resource for us as Rotarians to ensure there is no reason why we're not using the correct logos and icons associated with our organization I'm going to spend a little bit of time now just talking through um, the brand center first of all when you go into the brand center you will see there is a section there people of action will come on to in a minute the guidelines as I just mentioned the logos which we're going to talk about now some further material bottom left corner advertisements which uh, come out uh, and some images and videos uh, I have to say a number of the images on the website are a little American centric uh, for my likes uh, but there's some good material there and they are all good on point images but particularly about logos when you click on there um, there's a raft of logos that we have as an organization so just um, running through the, uh, the the screen there uh, we have the rotary logos which is where you can get your master brand and mark of excellence we have the template which i'll come on to in a moment we have the rotaract and interact logos and rotor rotor kids uh next some foundation logos and then there's a section on um uh, theme logos uh, for the internal theme uh, some polio uh, logos uh, etc but i would like to talk to you about the template uh, you may have seen this before and um, so if you have I don't really apologize because a brush up will is always good uh, but if you've never done it before this is a great little uh, little um, few slides just so you can download your own uh, uh, your own logo so uh, you click view and you come onto a screen which will look a little bit like this this is slightly cropped down and it asks you to put in the um, location or club identifier which we should be using on anything relating to a club your um, um, your club identifier of its district uh, you put your district identifier on and in district 1285 uh, which we don't use as a number because uh, no one cares whether we're 1285 or 1286 or 1287 for that matter uh, we are Rotary uh, Northwest of England and Isle of Man and we should all use the geographical uh, description for our geography rather than district 1285 so you can uh, pop in there your name of your club I'm a member of the um, Rotary Club of Prescott and we call ourselves Rotary Prescott so a simple type in there and you're able to uh, to save it which we'll come on to in a minute uh, you can put it above if you would like and of course you can use the word club there is an option 
uh, on the um, on the brand uh, center to put the word club in there personally as Dave uh, mentioned uh, before and I, I don't like the word club and Rotary Great Britain and Ireland tend not to use the word club but if you want to of course you can uh, you can put your designator on the uh, right hand side uh, of the uh, mark of excellence and there's another option with the word club there uh, you can also choose to pick the simplified logo so the uh, the standard version is called um, normal I believe and this is the simplified and of course there's a few colors so we have azure blue uh, we have black and we have the incredibly easy to see white version uh, but it does come up with a little um, a little box there in red to say you've picked a white logo you've got a white background you can't see the white logo but I promise you when you download it you get a white version of your image so once you've done that you can download the logo and uh, there's a couple of little quirks here on the brand sensor uh, which you should be aware of the first option when you press save will be to download it as a PDF now ordinarily a PDF file for what um, a normal Rotarian might use isn't much good uh, because you can't really use the PDF image in a, uh, a Word document and you can't um, mesh that together with a photograph which we'll talk about later. Uh, so you need to refresh your screen, uh, it's the way the software works and when you refresh the screen you'll see that the two blue boxes are um, the two blue boxes are illuminated and you can download as a JPEG and when you do that the uh, Rotary logo will come with a white background around it. Now the white background may seem to be uh, quite a large white background but that's sized specifically uh, to suit the brand guidelines and gives you the correct amount of spacing around the logo. So if you're putting it into a document it gives you a guide of where your next image or text box should be uh, but you can also download it with uh, as a PNG file and when you download as a PNG file um, you get a transparent background now that's really useful when you want to put that logo over a photograph because you can then um, uh, see the photograph behind it and we'll come on to uh, some of the people of action things in a minute and that's really useful um, so it's dead easy to do uh, you download the files you'll save them they actually stay um, as you can see here this particular screen grab was taken in March 2019 um, and they stay within your section of the brand center uh, for well 30 days uh, and it allows you to re-download them in that in that period uh, there is a little uh, you've got like a little storage facility within your your part your part of the uh, roachy.org website uh, so that's how to download a logo uh, but for those members of the audience today that are in district 1285 Rotary Northwest of England and Isle of Man um, the public image team have been really really helpful and very recently uh, the images for those logos have been sent to uh, your club president secretary and I believe public image chairs uh, within the last couple of weeks uh, there will be a reminder going out as well uh, just to say that you've received those it was a Dropbox link and you have got the three colorways um, or four colorways of your uh, your image going through so hopefully that was uh, useful as a, as a how to use the um, brand center to customize a logo for your club and the formats that you can do it in so we should now not be using anywhere certainly on social media web and anything printed the legacy brand and here's a little gift that I stole from uh, Evan Burrell uh, with the the shredded picture of the legacy brand uh, but moving on we have a um, like I say we are a global organization and as such there are a few more tools in the brand center toolbox and now I would like to talk to you a little bit about people of action so this is a great um, advertising campaign that allows us to brand 
uh, our documentation, our social media, our uh, um, public image, um, whether it's um, you know physical assets such as signage that goes out to an event uh, with the livery people of action. And this is externally uh, broadcastable, uh, no problems at all. And I would just like to talk to you a little bit about that. So we've got the red ring around there. So press the button, learn more. Here we have the people of action. And within this section on the website, we have a, a number of logos that you can download. Uh, you can download them in a couple of formats. I've shown you them here. So we have a condensed format, uh, which they call stacked in black, blue and white. And then we have the, um, the, the stretched format. Um, in, again, black, the colour, and white as well. But you're also able to create some images uh, on the website with the Together We Transform. And you, I'm sure, have all seen uh, these images being broadcast, but you are able to customise them on the brand centre to suit photographs that you may want to use for your particular uh, event or marketing campaign that you're putting forward. So here we have uh, transform with a standard image, uh, polio and polio with a standard image, inspire, connect, and here are the, the masks that you can download. I'm going to tell you all about that now. So you could download them to put them on your own photograph. A couple of ways of doing that within the people of action section on the website there's a create your own button as highlighted in red there and you can create a number of uh, posts uh, we can't go through them all today but we're going to choose the people of action facebook post there the second one in and you press the create button and on that create button you would choose uh, maybe a little bit hard to see there but um uh, there's a drop down box and uh, which is the red uh, i've superimposed it there and you can see the little blue word you pick the verb that you would like to use for your um for your uh, your mask that you're going to put over a, a photograph and you choose a photograph from the library uh, but to the right there there is a button called custom and you can actually pick your own picture so here's a few pictures that are in my particular library on the uh, on the brand sensor uh, but you can upload a picture and apply the mask to that image that you put on these these pictures stay there um, forever I suppose and uh, you can call upon uh, a different mask uh, as you as you wish so here's one uh, of uh, Prescott my club uh, a little bowling um, social uh, together we connect and that's something that we put out on social media now you might not necessarily want to always use the brand sensor and you can just download a blank mask so here you can see there's the blank mask is prepared you press save with the save, the save button indicated there and this would save a um, a connect image as a png file so you could um I put that over um, um, a graphic or a photograph of your choice going forward and I believe a future masterclass um, we will show you how uh, to do that um, and make use of uh, this format of um, of branding but here we have the image now which has been floated across a picture there's uh, together we connect over a tree planting project and it makes the, the image look a little bit more powerful a few more examples of how the um, the masks can be used. Uh, here's Eric and Irene, a, a meal pack. Um, uh, they're um, together. We inspire. Uh, we have uh, Tony Clayson, champion change. Uh, we have Irene here at the Warrington uh, Beer Festival, although she's making gins. And uh, there's another one there of of me looking uh, dressed up for some sort of charter. Um, the words that are available, the red words were the original, uh, but the black words there or the dark grey words there are the new ones that you can use and they're downloadable from the brand centre. Like I say, these are the official Rotary International words. 
we've stretched our understanding of the subject there with um, have fun and champion change and in a coming masterclass we'll uh, we'll uh, uh, show you how that uh, how that can be done wanted to spend a, a little bit of time now just talking about uh, uh, graphic design and, and and how we don't always have to use a, a photograph uh, as Dave mentioned earlier it's all about um, maybe publishing good um, on points key images onto your own social media channels from others uh, there was a, um, a new seventh um, avenue of service uh, published by Rotary International this week which was environmental and there's been quite a lot of images put out on social media that could be easily shared onto your page whether that be Twitter or Facebook or LinkedIn for that matter uh, to make it look like you're more engaged and more uh, vibrant as a, as a club than maybe you are and look like there's some throughput of news on there so there's a number of different formats these are not exhaustive but uh, there's a um, a free to use uh, piece of web software called Canva uh, you can get a, a, a pro license which you pay a monthly subscription for but some basic functionality allows you to import a photograph apply some graphics uh, some text to that particular photograph uh, the beauty about Canva is it's really easy to use they'll give you a template to start off from that you can customize um, and it will automatically uh, size the um, the output to the social media you're using so if you want a particularly a particular Facebook post it will size it correctly to the current uh, uh, Facebook change their algorithm but it will it will uh, it will uh, size it to suit that or Twitter slightly smaller Instagram etc Instagram stories Facebook stories uh, I don't know if you've uh, noticed on Facebook that the post is a is a, a landscape format but a story is a is a more portrait based um, um, uh, format and Canva will do that second part of that is uh, PowerPoint uh, I love PowerPoint I use it quite a lot for work in my uh, d day job uh, but um, it's um, ubiquitous most people have got a copy of uh, PowerPoint it's um, standalone or part of an Office 365 account uh, for those that want to explore a little bit further um, the Adobe have a product called InDesign which is the pink one there the ID one um, this is a professional uh, piece of software it's a it's a paid for piece uh, of software but uh, very powerful um, and that is the software for example that Dave uh, King will use to produce the Rotary magazine so it's professional desktop publishing software uh, the second one there would be Photoshop again from Adobe it's a, a paid for subject uh, paid for software uh, but again extremely powerful and if you need to make some um, some editing to some uh, a photograph etc then Photoshop's the, um, uh, the the place to go uh, quite uh, clunky to use uh, unless you know your way around it uh, and, and they're both paid for products like I say I would be using free the free Canva service or, or PowerPoint uh, PowerPoint can do uh, a lot more than you probably think so I want to just show you a few images that um, we as a district have, have created over the uh, the last few uh, months uh, maybe months and years here uh, with regard to uh, membership and public image and uh, sharing the Rotary story but in a visual graphical way uh, these are really great opportunities to engage so here we have a, a join us are you get uh, going to get involved join us change the world here there everywhere I also got a COVID one COVID's been quite good for putting out some images here so here's a social distancing image uh, something that, that we used uh, in Prescott stay at home which we've all been doing during uh, during lockdown Rotary is open for business as I started this presentation we are open for business we're online now and uh, we're uh, we're all getting experts at zoom and being uh, members of that uh, game show celebrity squares with our with our zoom meetings here's something that we did for um, a project um, 
in in the districts, which was the distribution of um, PPE and uh, tablets uh, for people to use who were uh, who were subject to, to to lockdown. And this was the uh, graphic that we put out with that. That was created on Canva. There, uh, they, they have a very distinct look to the, the Canva outputs. So that was a Canva one. Uh, here's one that we put out at the turn of the year. Is it time to engage? Time to volunteer? Um, Road to Great Britain Island. This was our first foray into a district uh, Zoom meeting. So uh, just a few uh, shout outs there for, will it be good to stay in touch? Uh, look at us all now, 15 weeks later, we're, uh, we're Zoomed out. Here's a uh, Happy Easter from Warrington. Wear the mask from uh, COVID. Rotary, Rotary Day, 23rd of February. That's uh, an image that we put out on the Northwest site. And again here, time to get involved and get something back on World Rotary Day. As I mentioned, we have a new area of service focus um, uh, on top of the six that we've already got. So this is the seventh, supporting the environment. And this was a, a graphic that we put out uh, a couple of weeks ago. So I would ask you to think about either borrowing these graphics from social media, and these are on the Northwest site, and, and resharing them on the, your own uh, site, your own club Facebook page, um, and just um, allowing you to have a throughput between ev events that, uh, and projects that you're doing or uh, not doing, just to show that you're engaged, you're vibrant, and you are open for business. As with all good presentations, I've got takeaways for you today. Unfortunately, it's not a curry. Um, first one, tell your story. As Dave said at the moment, at uh, the beginning of this presentation, telling your Rotary story is the most important way of getting our message out there. And it can be done on social media with the correct photographs, the correct branding, makes us look more consistent and more vibrant. As you can probably gather, I'm a big advocate of the Rotary brand and using the correct Rotary brand makes us look consistent as a global organisation. Doesn't make us look flaky and they say, well, there's a little blue image there that I've seen and they haven't posted for a couple of years. If we have the right brand consistently used with good frequency of posts, it makes us look alive and vibrant. Third, social media. We are all social animals and we use social media to a lesser or greater extent. But social media is, is here to stay. It's not a fad. It's part of the fabric of life now. And using the correct branding and right images on your social media posts will enable us to engage with a gr greater effect. And lastly, consistency. We need to be consistent with everything we do. It needs to be correctly branded, the right images, no checks, no chains. They've gone. No one's interested. It wants to be an exciting image. And I hope that you have enjoyed my um, presentation today. Are there any questions? Well, thank you, Phil. Of course, there are questions about this. And I would like to start off with a question from Darren Hans. And uh, he's asking quite a controversial question. Oof. Yeah. Do you think there could be some degree of confusion with the various mottos and calls to action? The main one we have is service above self. But then there are people of action. And then there's the yearly RI president theme, which changes annually. Is there a place for all of these? Um, well, I think there is. I, I won't give a cynical answer today. I will give the, the, the party line, shall we say. So uh, service above self is our motto. And the most current external branding that we use is people of action. And I believe we are people of action in everything that we do. Uh, as I mentioned, and I, I hope I uh, try to get the point across, is the internal theme is the internal theme. And it's for 1.2 million internal Rotarians. Uh, and it's a call of a call to arms for us 
to say Rotary opens opportunities or Rotary connects the world as as we had last year. It is for us. Um, I think potentially using the internal theme externally does dilute the fact that we've got a great master brand and in modern parlance, people of action is the other external um, imagery that we should be using. Uh, so I would say that that is the, the, the two points we should be using and make sure that the internal theme is kept for in, internal reasons. Thanks for that. So Bev, uh, the president from Rotary Middleton, wants to know how and where we can learn how to manage media sites like FB websites. She says she's clean, uh, keen, uh, and she says she's clueless, but I know Bev, she absolutely is not. Um, can Rotary help me or us? I think we've got future master classes that may help you, but what do you think about that, Phil? Uh, so that's about the, uh, the uh, how do we improve the Rotary template website? We we'll just manage our, all our social media sites. It's quite, okay. yeah, spoke it's about, spoke of this earlier and said, you know, it is quite an undertaking if you've got three and four sites to manage. And how do you do it? I mean, we, there are ways of doing it. Um, so, um, I don't yeah, know. There's, you... a, there's a couple of uh, paid for services. So there's um, Hootsuite allows you to, um, but unfortunately it's a paid for service and the, uh, I believe there is a free version, but it, it, it's not as uh, comprehensive. Uh, there's a there's another site called Buffer, B-U-F-F-E-R, which allows you to pre-write uh, social media postings and have them scheduled to go out. So if you've got some time on a Sunday afternoon, uh, an hour, schedule half a dozen posts and it will it will post them out for you. Um, you can automatically tweet from, uh, sorry, post from Facebook to Instagram because they're the same organization and you can automatically tweet from LinkedIn. So it's just understanding those rules, but it can be a bit of a headache. And uh, I know Dave uh, alluded to that earlier um, and maybe get more than one person in the club to look after different media. I know we have a strategy in the Northwest where there's uh, three or four of us that manage the social media. So if one's busy with work or whatever, uh, the other one can take up the slack, so to speak. I mean, these are good points. It is about, we're back to that, that message of a strategy. It's when you start doing ad hoc things, that's what takes up the time and people then think, this is too much, I can't do this. So we're back to what Dave says, this is about a media strategy. So Bernard Stone, um, I don't know Bernard, but Bernard says, you introduced yourself wearing a dinner jacket. Could this be part of the issue? He suggests that's a devil advocate question. What do you think about that? Um, no, I, th I thought it was quite a good photograph, really. Um, I mean, we've got a, a broadly internal organi organization um, audience here today. Uh, I, I like the photograph. Uh, possibly uh, the dinner jacket is not necessarily the one. Um, I just, I, I just quite like the photograph, really. Uh, I don't have a lot of photographs of me, so uh, that, that was the one I chose today. So uh, I make no apology for that, but I, I think there's a, there's, there's a possibly a point. I would definitely not have a, um, um, a, a pictures on social media with with chains and uh, etc. and checks, as we've said. I mean, I think I think what is driving that is there. You know, you you showed the image of you, you know the two muppets there, two older, and it really it's dinner jackets, it's uh, meat to eat, and maybe that perpetuated that. Maybe, maybe so. So. Ravi, um, Ravi Many from, I think, Bolton, one of the Bolton clubs, he asks, are we allowed to use the international theme on club letterheads? Um, you know, it's interest, an interesting question. Uh, I would say, I think the formal answer would be no, but I, I don't really have a problem with that on a letter. The other thing I would say is how many letters are we writing? You know, it's you know how many letters are actually going out um, uh, to, to 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 people? Um, yeah, I, I, I won't be broadcasting it. I don't think it's um, so. There you go. Yeah. So Robert Bracegrudel uh, comes up with a, a very interesting question. He says, and we're back to membership. I think it's, we can see a theme here. We can see how closely membership 
foundation even, and public image will work together. So these questions are all interchangeable. But he suggests, how do we include those present Rotarians who, A, don't want to risk Zoom, Instagram, Facebook, on their own computers, or B, don't have computers at all? Are we at risk of um, alienating some of our members by, by all of this? I, th I think there's there's a possibility. Uh, I have to say, um, uh, although there, there was a initial um, stories about the scares associated with Zoom, uh, Zoom is incredibly safe, and there are some safeguards within Zoom now for passworded and encrypted um, uh, login and, and and a waiting room which uh, allows you to stop people just uh, attending your meeting. It's very, very easy to turn someone off if you don't want them in the room. With regard to not having a computer at all, um, Zoom has a complete, completely integrated dial-in dial -in service. So you can dial in from anywhere in the world. Of course, you don't get the same visual interaction, uh, but you can di dial in. And certainly, uh, I know um, I and, and you'll know from work that sometimes um, Zoom calls, we, we haven't got time to... Uh, uh, to come in on computer so we'll, we'll come in on, uh, on a voice call uh, so that's inclusive uh, my own club we have a, a member uh, 55 years worth of service and he comes in with a with a phone call every week um, he enjoys it he enjoys chatting away he's never seen the celebrity squares element so he's not missing that uh, he just thinks it's a it's a it's a it's a multi-party phone call which works well, so that thanks for that. I mean, I, I think, you know, going right back to it, we can always pick up the telephone to our members. We can bob round in a socially distanced way. It is about keeping in contact. I mean, you, you've just got to do that, whatever means you have, because they are our friends and we want to look after them. Absolutely. So, um, a technical um, question here, Phil, what software would you recommend to create a video similar to your opening video? I have to tell you the ideas were all mine, nothing to do with him, he may have had the software all mine. Uh, so um, the opening software, the opening little video we did was, um, don't cringe at this, any professionals in the room, was done on good old fashioned PowerPoint. So you arrange your slides, and you save it, and then you save as an MP4 player. Uh, you put the music in. Uh, I have to say, um, with a little bit of knowledge, it's ridiculously easy to do. Uh, maybe a future masterclass will show you how to do that, but it's bizarrely easy to do. So another question about web images. Uh, Eastmouth, I don't know if that's a lady or a man, but have used web images, but copyright, is it a worry or is it? I think, I don't know quite what the question is here, but I think it's all about the copyright images. Uh, and you and I have had a discussion about this. Yeah, uh, copyright is a is a a a a, 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 a problem. Uh, it's um, we might want to actually just bring uh, Dave back in here just to talk about this because uh, Dave knows an awful lot about uh, copyright, and um, it is a problem if you don't if you haven't taken the image or have responsibility to use that uh, authorization to use that image, you can't use it. Uh, so uh, we're involved, uh, as, as has been mentioned, me and Dave with, oh, and, and Irene, with Together Talks. And the images that we do, we make sure um, they are our images. Uh, now, the images that I've used today, um, I, I have uh, access to a, a licensed account. Uh, th there is a small cost associated with getting hold of a copyright image, uh, a copyrighted image where I have the license. Uh, but I think that adds to the the message that we're putting across it's quite, it's quite a small cost um and that's why i encourage people uh, if they see something they like on the northwest site share it onto their site uh you know we're, we're, we're all here to, to to share as it as it were but if you haven't taken the photograph or you have not got permission i'm afraid you can't use the image there have been a couple of instances at rotary great britain and ireland uh, level where uh, costs have been incurred associated with the use of a copyrighted image so yeah. be warned yeah i think i think dave wants to say a few words about that he's come in um just want to unmute yourself dave and and uh, say a few words 
Yeah, I'm not going to say much because Phil's, Phil's covered it really well. I put out guidance last year to all clubs across Great Britain and Ireland about um, about copyright. And Phil's exactly right. We've just had to pay €5,000 uh, for a copyright breach up in Scotland. And it was really innocuous. And what's happening now is if you think, oh, I can just sneak it off the internet and get away with it. There are now these things called bots where a photo agencies who own the copyrights will scour the internet of for their images. And if they discover an image which hasn't been paid for, you'll suddenly get an invoice and you as a club will be liable. So this is not something to dismiss lightly. It, it, it can be painful. And the, the club in Scotland, it was for two breaches, by the way, has had to pay for, for those that, that there. So Phil's point is this, and, it, and I'll reiterate, if you do not own the image, if it's not your own work, do not publish. However, you can, if you go to the, to the original um, author, to the person who, whose work it is, and ask for permission, more often than not, they will uh, agree for a credit. And just to say, Phil, I've just had the images come over this morning from Captain Tom, who will be on Together Talks later this month. We wanted to promote Captain Tom's talks on, on for, for Together Talks by just taking an image, but we couldn't do it until we got it from the family. We've got that this morning, and now we can use it. Had we not done so, Phil would have had to run out of Bourbon biscuits because he wouldn't be able to afford anything anymore. <laughs> oh, very good, very good. No, it's a big thing, and uh, I know that certainly we worry about is it is it copyright? Is everything okay there? Because you don't want anything coming back because it is a, a lot of money here. Um, so Chantel, uh, just going back to the big checks that David mentioned earlier. If no big checks are, are to be done, how are we going to promote our giving? Any ideas for engaging photo opportunities? What's the alternative here? Anyway. Yeah. Sorry, just give me that one again, Irene, please. Said, if no big checks, then how do we promote our giving? Any ideas for engaging photo opportunities? Well, I, th I think you just need to, to, to think about out, outside of the box. So you can clearly write within the little snapshot, we have given 5,000 pounds to uh, X organization or 500 pounds to X organization. But think about the, the good that money will do. So for example, if you are sending, um, uh, if you are buying some food for a meal pack, a, a, a food bank, uh, t take pictures of the, of the collection of, of, the, of the food potentially. If you are sending on uh, some children, uh, some uh, children on a day out, you know, kids, kids out, and then take a picture of the result of the money rather than just the money going over. The money going over is a function of uh, admin. Uh, yes, we've given them 500 quid, but the result is what you want to take a picture of, uh, the outcome. No one's interested that the check was handed over at that restaurant at that time. It's the result that matters. And that goes with our people of action. Certainly at our own club, at our, at our, at our charter evening, we hand out checks. It's one of our traditions, if you like. But um, it was, we did something for Rise Against Hunger. And because I was public image chair at the time and still am, I couldn't possibly have a check going out. So I had the impact. I had the amount of money that that, that would represent. So say it was a, it was a thousand pounds, and we, in pictorial terms, we we actually showed people how many meals that would buy, instead of saying actually there's the, there's the money. So I'm not so sure a photographer liked it all that much, but I, I thought I can't possibly put out a check, have it flagged off. So I thought no. Now somebody's asking a very technical question against Trevor. He wants to know what camera and microphone you're using, and he suggests it's GoPro. I don't know. Uh, no, it's not GoPro, I'm afraid. Uh, it is the um, industry standard Logitech C920S, for those that really want to know. Yeah, well, of course it is. <laughs> so, Herbert suggests, uh, do you not feel that it's all about confidence building? Uh, and he said people initially mistrusted the telephone, and that's with regard to using Zoom. Uh, and all the rest of it. So that's just a, a comment here. Yep. And and uh, Garvin Crabtree says, um, the other area to be very aware of when using photographs is safeguarding. Now, that's all about using, not taking uh, photographs of children. And if you do, you really must get the, the permission from this. It's quite 
it, you know, it's quite a thing that we just can't take photographs of anyone and think it's okay these days. It absolutely is not. Um, so we've just got to be mindful of this. And, and it's quite right to bring up safeguarding. It's quite, um, it's quite a thing there. Now, so what other questions do we have here? Um, somebody, Julie says, I use the master brand in my emails. I assume this is acceptable. That's what you're using, Julie. Yeah, uh, if you're using it for your rotary email, and most of us have a, a separate account for our rotary email, and you want to put the logo on, um, it is uh, preferred that you use one with the club designator on uh, the bottom of it. Uh, and like I said earlier, we have been very kind to um, uh, District 1285 uh, members and issued all the logos already. Um, we can uh, we can resend them if if needed. So. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, by all means, absolutely. Yeah. And so some other questions about where they can get a hold of the graphics. Well, the graphics shown on Phil's presentation are already out there. We can resend them out, but they've already been used on social media. I've seen them all. They're all out there uh, and they're all available. And you can put your own uh, your own club uh, you know, name on that. So it's quite, uh, they're all available. But I would suggest something. I would suggest for those who are interested, to have a look at the brand centre and play around with it. It's much, much easier than you think. And there will be a masterclass coming up in the near future that will show you how to even just do it very, very simply on PowerPoint and to slide the, you know, the, the images on top of each other. It's, it really is quite easy. Uh, initially, it's quite clunky, but once you get used to it, it's quite easy. Um, I mean, Ken wants, Ken Garrity wants to borrow them, but you can borrow them by all means, but I would suggest have a look at your own. Just float some of those masks across. Um, and as we're coming out of time now, but Maria suggests a shop where we can purchase logo shirts, blouses, scarves. It might be cheaper purchase district-wide rather than the club. There's a couple of issues there. I think you're right. I've seen some, um, you know, polo shirts and it's not quite right. The logo is not quite right or people go ahead and just order things and you cringe and they've got it for years rotarians like to wear their jumpers for seven years anyway so um i would there's something about that maybe not a shop but there's something where we can check this over because certainly we we have when we buy the stuff from rota store it's bob on and there's no question of it if we want our gazebos our flags it's absolutely spot on there's no worries when you start to go local uh, to local printers, it, the colour could be wrong, the spacing could be wrong, because it's more than just getting the logo right. So we're almost at the very end, and I would just like to thank Phil very much for his messages. And the key story, as I, I'll repeat them, is tell your story, keep it professional. And we are a global organisation, let's be proud of that and use our social media and our photographs. Use it wisely, use it well. It's all there and we're all here to help you. Now, I hope you've found it informative today. Our next talk is on the 8th of August. We've got a couple of things lined up. We'll start to put that out. So thanks again for joining us for our first masterclass and have a good weekend. Mm -hmm.